is torrenting slowly dying? This technology that once dominated internet traffic has evolved dramatically over the years. Understanding its current state provides valuable insights into how digital content sharing works in today's internet landscape. At its core, torrenting is a method of file sharing that uses peer-to-peer -peer protocol, P2P for short. Unlike traditional downloads where you get a file from a single server, torrenting breaks files into smaller pieces distributed across multiple users. Each person downloading also uploads parts they already have. This is called seeding. This decentralized approach means no single server bears all the bandwidth cost or becomes a single point of failure. The technology behind it is actually pretty ingenious. It works by creating a distributed network where everyone contributes resources, making the entire system more efficient and resilient than traditional client-server models. Given all the alternatives available today, you might wonder why do so many people still use torrents nowadays? The answer lies in its unique advantages. First, torrenting can handle massive files efficiently. Imagine you're trying to download a complete Linux distribution ISO file or a large public dataset with a spotty internet connection. Torrenting lets you pause and resume without losing progress, picking up exactly where you left off. It's also resilient. If one source goes offline, you can still download from others. For distributing legitimate free content like Linux distributions or game updates, it reduces costs for creators. Download speeds can actually be faster than traditional methods when there are many seeders. Basically, the more people sharing a file, the faster everyone can download it since you're getting pieces from multiple sources simultaneously. For creators of free content, it's a cost-effective distribution method since users share bandwidth costs. With these benefits in mind, a natural follow-up question arises. How does torrenting compare to regular downloads these days? Direct downloads are simpler. Click and download from a single source. But torrents can be faster for popular content with many seeders. Direct downloads fail completely if the server goes down, while torrents keep working. Privacy is another factor. With direct downloads, the server knows exactly who downloaded what. With torrents, your activity is distributed across many peers, though not completely anonymous without additional tools. Using a VPN has become almost standard practice for many torrent users who value their privacy. Beyond these technical comparisons, there's been a broader shift in how people access content. Streaming services have largely replaced both for entertainment media. These days, most people prefer the convenience of clicking play rather than managing download files and seeding ratios. Despite these advantages, many people wonder if torrenting is still relevant. This brings me to the big question that gets asked all the time. Are torrents even still a thing? The short answer is yes. Torrenting definitely still exists and works, but its popularity has declined significantly from the peak in the 2000s and early 2010s. The rise of affordable streaming services like Netflix, Spotify, and others changed the game for entertainment content. Cloud storage and sharing services made legitimate file sharing easier. Internet speeds have generally improved, making direct downloads more viable. However, torrenting remains popular for many specialized and technical use cases where other distribution methods fall short. To fully understand where we are now, it helps to look at how we got here. What exactly happened to torrents over the years? Back in the 2000s, torrenting dominated internet traffic but increased legal pressure, site shutdowns, and better alternatives caused a massive shift. Major torrent sites got targeted with lawsuits. ISPs started monitoring traffic, and the technology moved from mainstream to niche use. Despite this evolution, the technology never disappeared. It just transformed. This transformation is evident when looking at where torrenting stands today. Torrent traffic has decreased from about 30% of all internet traffic in 2008 to under 3% currently. Major torrent sites have come and gone, with frequent shutdowns. Platforms like Kick-Ass Torrents, Torrent Hound, and Extra Torrent were once household names but disappeared after legal actions, while others, like the Pirate Bay, have survived through constant domain changes and resilient infrastructure. But the technology itself is still actively used and developed. Legitimate uses have actually grown, with many software companies using it to distribute updates. Some countries still rely heavily on torrenting due to limited streaming service availability. This becomes particularly important in regions where content licensing restrictions create digital deserts, leaving torrenting as one of the few reliable ways to access certain types of content. The community
community has become more niche but remains active. Speaking of legitimate uses, it's worth highlighting the completely legal ways torrenting is used today. Open source software distribution is a major use case, with many Linux distributions relying on torrents. In the gaming world, Blizzard once used peer-to-peer -peer technology in its background downloader for World of Warcraft updates, which helped distribute the load across users. In the Minecraft community, popular mod packs like Feed the Beast and Take Heat are distributed through their own custom launchers. Though they don't use traditional torrenting, public domain media and Creative Commons content creators distribute their work this way too. For example, sites like archive.org use torrents to distribute public domain films, books, and audio recordings to reduce server load. Scientific researchers share data sets that are too large for traditional download methods. Independent artists and filmmakers sometimes use torrents to share their work freely. Even some universities use it to distribute lecture recordings efficiently to students. Beyond just using torrents, many viewers are curious about potential financial aspects. Now, for the question about making money with torrenting. Direct monetization of torrenting itself is difficult and often legally questionable. Some legitimate methods include creating torrent clients or related software tools with premium features. Running legitimate torrent sites with advertising is another option, though ad revenue has declined significantly in recent years. Using torrenting as a distribution method for your own content can save on bandwidth costs. Some companies offer seed boxes, high-speed servers for torrenting, as a paid service. The reality is that substantial income from torrenting is rare nowadays. If you're trying to monetize a torrent-related service, you might face payment processors refusing to work with you due to the industry's reputation. In these cases, researching alternative payment methods early can save you major headaches later. Since we've established that torrenting's popularity has waned, a natural question follows. If torrenting has declined, what's taken its place? Streaming services became the go-to for entertainment media. Cloud storage and file-sharing platforms dominate personal and professional use. Content delivery networks handle software distribution more efficiently. Direct download sites with premium tiers offer faster speeds for those willing to pay. For some uses, nothing has fully replaced torrenting's unique benefits, especially for large files and distributed content. You could also consider setting up a private torrent network if you need to regularly share large files within an organization. It's more complicated initially, but can save significant bandwidth costs over time. Looking to the future, where is torrenting technology headed? The basic protocol continues to be refined and improved. I'm seeing integration of torrent-like technology in mainstream applications, often behind the scenes. Decentralized storage platforms are adopting similar principles. Blockchain and Web3 projects have incorporated concepts from torrent technology. The core strengths of P2P file sharing will likely ensure some form of the technology survives, even as its mainstream use continues to evolve. So where does all this leave torrenting today? Torrenting isn't dead, but it has evolved and found its niche. The technology remains impressive and useful for specific purposes. Legitimate uses continue to benefit from its unique advantages. While its prominence has diminished, the influence of P2P sharing on how we think about content distribution remains significant. I hope this cleared up your questions about the current state of torrenting. The technology that once revolutionized file sharing continues to influence how we approach distributed systems in ways we might not even recognize. If you found this overview helpful, please leave a like and subscribe for more tech insights. Thanks for watching.